Hello everyone, and welcome back to the Fluctus Channel. Since their invention in the early 1900s, helicopters have played an essential role in both military and civilian transport. Their vertical takeoff and landing abilities allow them to go places and do things planes cannot. Though many companies have contributed to the advancement of helicopter technology, manufacturers like Bell, Sikorsky and Airbus continue to lead the way. The latter is particularly notable for introducing the Fenestron to the helicopter world. Airbus developed this enclosed tail rotor over the course of several decades. This feature differs from a traditional rotor in several ways. For starters, it produces far less noise, which is obviously beneficial in military models, but also for civilian aircraft operating in city environments. Fenestrons are also safer, as they minimize the chances that the spinning rotor will come into contact with any objects in the environment. Lastly, they provide improved performance. This is because the enclosed design provides a more efficient thrust distribution and reduces drag. In 2021, Airbus Helicopters introduced its latest model, the H160. This medium-sized utility copter was designed to be highly versatile, making it suitable for everything from corporate transport and emergency medical services to offshore operations and more. The aircraft features a canted Fenestron tail rotor, blue edge composite rotor blades, and a sleek aerodynamic profile. All of these features contribute to reduce noise levels and improved fuel efficiency. The H160 also boasts Airbus's latest avionics suite and a fully digital cockpit to enhance situational awareness, reduce pilot workload, and enable safer and more efficient flight operations. Despite its relatively small size, the helicopter can seat 12 people very comfortably, and its interior can easily be modified for more luxury-oriented purposes. This, combined with its 475 nautical mile range, is sure to make the H160 a popular choice for celebrities and business tycoons. Another company at the forefront of helicopter manufacturing and technology is Robinson Helicopters. Based out of California, this relatively small company produces high-quality, low-cost civilian aircraft for various purposes. The company's massive production facility is nearly half a mile long, employing around 1,300 people to help assemble their helicopter models by hand. In fact, Robinson maintains full control over the manufacturing process, producing most of their components in-house to ensure quality and precision. The company also employs a team of skilled engineers and technicians who oversee the assembly of each helicopter. 
These men and women perform multiple inspections throughout the assembly process to ensure every model meets the company's incredibly high standards. On the other side of the United States is Cayman Aircraft, a Connecticut aerospace company responsible for producing some of the world's most advanced and capable helicopters. The company's signature model is the K-MAX, a highly efficient, heavy lifting copter known for its unique vertical design, intermeshing rotors, and a thin fuselage. As with Robinson Helicopters, Cayman maintains strict control over the design and production of each aircraft. They fabricate many of the components on site, including the fuselage, rotor blades, landing gear, and control surfaces. The K-MAX is then assembled by the company's skilled technicians and assembly workers who follow a systemic process to ensure proper integration of the various subsystems. The K-MAX is capable of carrying external loads of up to 6,000 pounds, despite weighing just 5,000 pounds. The key to the K-MAX's success is its unique twin rotor design. These intermeshing rotors spin in opposite directions but are synchronized electronically. This eliminates the need for a tail rotor and provides excellent maneuverability, even in challenging environments. As a result of these innovations, the K-MAX has seen success in a number of different industries and sectors. It is currently used around the world for things like aerial logging, construction transport, firefighting and disaster relief. Helicopters have a long history of use by militaries around the world. In fact, some models have become just as iconic as some of the most successful military fighter planes. Though the manufacturing process is similar for both civilian and military helicopters, the latter are often held to different performance standards. The TH-73A is a military training helicopter designed for the U.S. Navy by Leonardo an Italian aerospace and defense company. Since its introduction, it is often one of the first helicopters a new pilot will get the chance to fly. In order to ensure the TH-73A can do its job properly, Leonardo strives to hire veterans whenever possible to assist in the helicopter's design, development, and assembly. One of the most valuable helicopters in U.S. military history is the Boeing AH-64 Apache. First introduced in 1986, the Apache is a versatile and heavily armed helicopter. Designed for close air support, anti-tank warfare, reconnaissance, and other combat missions. Boeing is also responsible for the CH-47 Chinook, a massive dual-rotor transport copter that was first introduced back in the early 1960s. Nonetheless, the design proved so successful that new Chinooks are still being manufactured today. Of course, the process has advanced quite a bit since the 60s. The structural components of the Chinook, such as the fuselage, rotor blades, and tail, are typically manufactured in pieces at multiple facilities that specialize in just those parts. 
These are then shipped to Boeing's Philadelphia facility for final assembly, after which they are carefully painted to the appropriate color. From here, the last helicopter will undergo rigorous flight testing before it is shipped to the military. In the early 2000s, the United States military began working on an initiative to develop a family of next-generation rotorcraft to replace aging helicopters across the fleet. Known as the Future Vertical Lift Program, the initiative has a number of goals, including enhancing operational effectiveness, reducing life cycle costs, increasing range and speed, and enabling greater flexibility in mission execution. Due to its age, one of the first aircraft set to be replaced is the CH-47 Chinook. At the moment, several different prototype models are being considered, each with their own unique capabilities. From future attack and reconnaissance to long-range transport, the more capabilities a single aircraft can boast, the better suited it will be for frontline action. One program showing incredible promise is that of the Sikorsky Boeing Defiant X. This ultra-futuristic looking helicopter boasts superior speed and range capabilities, as well as a number of innovative features. Though it's not suitable for heavy lifting duties, the military believes this new helicopter could potentially evolve into a new long-range assault aircraft, potentially replacing the Apache or UH-1N. For instance, the SB-1 Defiant X employs a coaxial rotor system, where two counter-rotating main rotors are mounted on the same axis. Eliminating the need for a tail rotor. This configuration also provides exceptional agility. and enables high-speed forward flight without compromising maneuverability. On top of that, the Defiant X incorporates a pusher propeller at the rear of the aircraft, which provides additional thrust during forward flight, boosting speed and allowing for improved hover capabilities. One of the many ways in which the Defiant has separated itself from other future lift programs is its ability to land in incredibly tight quarters. In one trial, the aircraft demonstrated its ability to descend from high altitude flight into a heavy coverage zone. Because it can move so precisely, it can efficiently work its way around trees, buildings, and other obstacles, even at incredibly low speeds. However, once it's free of that coverage, the Defiant is capable of achieving incredible levels of acceleration. In one test, testers clocked the aircraft at more than 270 miles per hour. No doubt this will play a huge role in its potential success should it be adopted by the U.S. military. That's the end of this video. I hope you enjoyed it. Make sure to subscribe to this channel so you don't miss any of our new content. See you next time.